Welcome everybody, Film Fan 108 here, and it's that time again because the Dollar Tree has brand new Blu-ray and DVDs for sale for only one dollar. I'm telling you guys, this sale is extremely popular. It keeps happening sooner and sooner. Uh, it's growing in popularity, and rightfully so, guys. So, let's head into the first Dollar Tree location and uh, see what this out and about Dollar Tree adventure has in store for us. Let's get going. All right, guys, we're over in this Dollar Tree right here, and they have a small amount here, but I'm very curious of what kind of variety they're going to have this time around, guys. And the first thing I'm seeing over here is they have the DVD of Uncanny, which I've never heard of this title before. I like the cover, though. The cover looks really cool, very sort of sci-fi-esque. Not bad. Well, that's interesting. Ah, uh, what is this about? Oh, that's interesting. It kind of, you know what? It kind of reminds me of, kind of reminds me of Deuce, um, or not, not Deuce, um, uh, Ex Machina. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. It kind of reminds me of Ex Machina, of sort of the sort of sci-fi aspects and sort of, you know, robot technology or anything. That's kind of what it reminds me of. Huh. That kind of looks cool. No, I never actually, never actually seen it before. Hmm. Kind of looks cool, honestly. I don't know whether it's sort of a cheapo sci-fi one, but I like the premise. I'd definitely give it a chance. Hmm. But then they've got Dare. What is Dare? Do something you're afraid of. Emmy Rossum, Zach Guilford, Ashley Springer. Huh. A... Sweetly sexed up triangle. Okay, what is this sucker? Any wrong? Oh, kind of like this sort of coming of age, sort of teenage movie that goes terribly wrong, man. Very interesting. It says, Pretty and Pink Cross with Cruel Intentions. That's quite the combo right there, guys. That's really interesting. Huh. I really like Emmy Rossum, man. I. I, I really like her quite a bit, and Rooney Mara is in this as well. I like Rooney Mara. I recently had a discussion with somebody that said that uh, Rooney Mara is sort of her time is up as an actress, like she's already peaked, and God, I hope not, because she's actually a really great actress. I would hate to see her peak early so far in her career. I'd really hate to see her peak, man, but I really like her as an actress. I like some of these people. I've never seen Zach Guilford before, but I'd be interested in this, man. It looks really interesting. Huh, I like that. Dare. It's not bad. Uh, then we've got... Oh, what's your number? This is the, the Blu-ray. Not bad. I don't see many Blu-rays here. I just see mostly DVDs, but here's Blu-ray. You know what? I honestly... I did see this movie. It's not a bad romantic comedy. I like Anna Faris in it. But, see, I'm not a huge fan of Anna Faris. I like her, but I'm not in love with her. I actually think this is really good for Chris Evans. I think Chris Evans is great in this, man. He's he really charming in this. It's, it's an alright romantic comedy, though. It's nothing, nothing like, essential to watch, but I thought it was, it was not bad, though. Pretty decent romantic comedy overall. It's not bad. Uh, they got... What else they got? Holy shit, they got yoga hosers here on Blu-ray. Holy shit, dude. I would never think we'd see yoga hosers here. Damn, man. You want to know what? I saw yoga hosers a while back. And the reason why I even watched yoga hosers was because of Kevin Smith. Because I really liked him. And I thought, okay, man. I've heard a lot of people say it's not very good. But I'm going to give it a chance anyways. And, oh my god, dude. Yoga hosers is terrible. I'm not lying to you guys. Yoga hosers is pretty rough, man. It really is. It's just about these sort of convenience store teenage clerks who are really annoying and self-centered and full of themselves. And they have to stop this sort of um, Nazi bratwurst army. It, it's so bizarre and so weird. And 
and it's not even weird in a fun way. It's just really terrible, man. You know, Johnny Depp is wasted here. Uh, uh, Lily Rose Depp and Harley Quinn Smith, um, Johnny Depp and Kevin Smith's da daughters are really bad in this. I mean, I'm not saying they're bad actresses, just this movie really stinks bad. I think this is Kevin Smith's worst movie, man. I really do. I, I don't know whether you guys agree with me or not, but this is this is pretty rough, man. I mean, definitely let me know what you think of Yoga Holders, but this has stink written all over it, man. I mean, for a dollar, maybe give it a chance, but ooh, yeah, that's rough, dude. Really rough. Uh, I also got Red vs. Blue Season 10. Ah, dude, I don't know anything about this. I am, I, I do know of Halo, but I'm not actually a fan. I've never actually, I've never actually played any of the Halo games. I mean, I don't have Xbox, so I've never played any of them. So, I mean, I get how popular it is. I get the hype of it. I don't, I've never actually know that there was any sort of like series for Halo. That's really cool. Red vs. Blue, season 10. I've never seen any of the other seasons. Let me know what you guys think of this one. It's interesting. Uh, let's see what else they got. They got Man from Earth Holocene? The Blu-ray DVD. What is this? It's got David Lee Smith, William Cat, Michael Dorn from Star Trek, and Vanessa Williams? What the hell is this? From the mind... Star Trek. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know. The fourteen thousand year old man from Earth. No. No, I I didn't see even the first film, so I have no idea about this. It looks the cover looks kind of cheesy though. It looks kind of like B B movie cheesiness. That's not really that good. It's just very cheap. But if it was cheap, it wouldn't have, like, Michael Dorn and Vanessa Williams in it. You know what I mean? So I'm really curious about this one, guys. Yeah, I don't know. Got a lot of special features on this sucker. Yeah, this is interesting. No, I've never heard of this one at all. If you guys have heard of this, let, let me know. It's interesting. They got the DVD right here with the actual, like, slip cut cover. Not bad there. They've also got... Chrome Skull Late to Rest 2, nice. The unrated director's cut, very cool. I watched this. I also watched the first um, Late to Rest. I I liked Late to Rest 2. I'm not in love with the second film. I think the first film is better. I went in with low expectations on the first film, and I was really pleasantly surprised. The second film, I felt, didn't quite meet my expectations. I wanted it to be a little bit better. I'm not sure I love the story exactly. I think that first film, though, is still really a great horror film. This one, eh, kind of iffy. I mean, I will say this much. I know they're thinking about making a third film. If not, they're going to do it. So I am kind of curious. But, yeah. If, if, you're, a, if you're a fan of, of Late to Rest and you haven't seen the second film, definitely go ahead and do it. It's, it's still worth it. And the bad guy here is brutal as hell. Really cool bad guy. But, yeah, not really... Not really much of a fan of the second film, though, compared to the first, but definitely let me know, guys. Uh, let's see, got that. I got A War. Never heard of this one. I'm the writer director of a hijacking. Fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, but I don't always trust them. Among the best war movies of all time. Uh... Oh, interesting. I do like a good war story. I do, I've told you guys that before. I do like a good war story. I've never heard of this one, so I definitely gotta look this one up, but the cover looks okay. It doesn't really, like, pop to me, but, you know, just, just because the cover's, you know, not the greatest does, doesn't mean the movie's bad, but, huh, I'll have to look into that. They've got Curious George, a bike ride adventure, for all you Curious George fans. They have... Girls for Life original movie from Lego Friends. I didn't even know Le Lego was making movies, but apparently so. I used to play with Legos when I was a kid, but way past that. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Something for, for girls there. DC Superhero Girls, Hero of the Year. That's interesting. Huh. We never thought about that. Uh, welcome to the Neighborhood. More stuff. Oh, and it's got sort of this sort of bonus puzzle thing for kids. Oh, well, that's cool. Kind of really, really fun stuff for kids right there. That's not bad. 
Uh, more curious. George, they've got learning to drive. Yeah, we saw this the, uh, the, the last time. It does look good, though. I only saw that the last time at the sale. Um, let's see what else they got. They got... At the Gate of the Ghost. That's interesting. I never heard of this one at all. Murder is the crime. Truth is the victim. Oh, that's interesting. I like the cover, dude. I like the cover with the red and sort of the swords and everything. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. A fascinating investigation and quest for truth with stunning performances. Huh. Sort of like an old school, like, action... Sort of like, martial arts movie. No, I never heard of this one. This does look really cool, though. I like the cover. They gave the coat. Yeah, that looks interesting, man. Uh, you got a Dirty Shame, the neutered version, which we did see the last time during the sale. I, I still say I, I recommend this movie. It's definitely one of John Waters' lesser films, in my opinion, but watch the unrated cut. The neutered version is definitely what it is, the neutered version for sure, but it's one that they definitely can't sell in stores. But give it a look if you're curious and you're a John Waters fan, but other than that, mm, I'd probably probably pass on it though but for a dollar it's worth at least exploring then they've got queens of the ring cashiers by day divas by night that's really interesting the miss cm punk and eve torres from wwe listen it's kind of a goofy comedy with these chicks trying to be wrestlers you know it kind of reminds me of um the show on netflix Glow, which I've only watched the first season of, and I gotta watch the second and third. I know I'm I'm so behind, but I like Glow quite a bit. And there's certain wrestling movies I like, but not every wrestling movie is created equal. You know what I'm saying, guys? So I would be kind of iffy about this one, but I would be interested though. Hmm. Interesting on that one. Um, they have Free Runner, Run for Your Life. Look at that cover. Sort of a parkour junkie's wet dream. Yo, look at that. Holy shit. What is this about? The ultimate death race. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Kind of a cool sort of little action movie. Yeah, I, I sort of like these sort of ticking time clock type of, of movies, a action, you know, you know, running for your life type of flicks, but this kind of looks a little cheesy. I mean, at least the cover does. I don't know if it's cheesy or not, but it looks cheesy. Huh, that's interesting. Uh, Brain Drain, original story, more DC superhero girls. Hmm, cool, cool stuff for girls there. Uh, let me see that. These girls there. Speed dating. Oh, she's, the eyes are up here. <laughs> I like that cover. That's great. That's really cool. Love at first sight happens every night. Oh, gee, the charming urban romantic comedy. I've never heard of this one. There's a lot of urban comedies that come to, to theaters, but I've never heard of this one, guys. A high energy romantic comedy. That falls. Oh, Bachelors and them falling in love. Almost like Wedding Crashers, almost. Kind of has a sort of, sort of feel of like Wedding Crashers. That's interesting. Huh. I like the cover, though. The cover, the cover's hilarious. That's interesting, huh. Teenagers. They've got Scooby-Doo and Kiss. Original movie. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, that cover's badass, dude. I love that cover. Oh, so cool. That cover's great. Damn it, man. That cover's awesome. Uh, you've got American Wrestler the Wizard. No, I've never heard of this one, man. With John Voight, William Fickner. No, I haven't heard of this at all. It kind of looks cool. Kind of like a very cool, inspirational sort of movie. Three stories, strong performances. Tale you know, based on true events. Well, that's interesting. Huh. No, I never heard of this one. I do like some good, like, in true, true events, like inspiring tales, kind of like something like Rudy. I really like this kind of stuff. I don't know how good this is or not. I never heard, heard of this. Huh. That's interesting. If you guys have heard of American Wizard, or American Wrestler the Wizard, definitely let me know. Hmm.
kind of looks really interesting to me. Hmm. And also we're seeing over here they have never let go. They've taken from the wrong mother. Damn right. If you like Taken, you'll love this. Huh. Sort of this sort of revenge, you know, don't sort of fuck with me type of movie. Very interesting. Uh, following an apparent abduction of a single mother. Oh, that's interesting. You know, boy, boy, we've been seeing a lot of these sort of revenge movies as of late, man. We've been seeing a ton of them. Yo, like all the Taken stuff with Liam Neeson, that movie with Jennifer Garner that came out, um, like this past year, like that, that was really interesting as well. Sort of these sort of like, like, you know, just because I look weak and meek doesn't mean I'm that way, I'm a pretty badass type of person kind of movie. Huh. It looked kind of cool, actually. I like the cover. Sort of, she's standing her ground, explosions all over the place. Huh. I never heard anything about this. Definitely let me know what you guys think of Never Let Go. Interesting. What else we got here? We've got... Holy shit, you gotta be kidding me, man. Oh my god, dude. Are you kidding me? A combo two-pack of loose cannons and another you. Wow. Dude, I don't know if you guys really know about loose cannons or not maybe you don't but I watched that movie when I was like y younger and I love this movie so much talk about an underrated movie dude loose cannons is really underrated oh my god dude that is so awesome that the Dollar Tree has this man Dan Aykroyd plays this sort of like cop he's got sort of sort of like some sort of like mental disorder where he changes personalities constantly and like Gene Hackman's the the cop, and they're trying to solve this, this this like mystery, and oh, it's such a great like like cop comedy, man, dude. This is such an underrated movie, and one of the most underrated Dan a Aykroyd films ever. I'm serious, guys. Look this one up if you haven't. Gene Hackman is awesome in this. Oh my God, I don't think I ever would have found this. Holy crap, dude. And another you. I think I had seen another you at some point. Maybe, but it's been such a long time, but I love, I love the combination here of these two guys, man. They are comedic geniuses, and when they're together in a movie, it is really funny, man. Oh, dude. Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder are some of the best out there, man. Oh, I would be very interested to definitely get, get this one. This one is like, like, wow, I can't believe I found this. This is gold, dude. Wow. That is awesome, dude. I'm that. This is definitely a must buy. Wow. That is awesome. Uh, the next thing I'm seeing is they have Con Man, the story of America's most creative criminal. Oh, I think I think we saw this one time. I think we did, because I remember seeing it maybe on one of the other out and abouts. Like I remember seeing Mark Hamill on the cover and James Con and Bing Rings and everything. It's got a great cast here. Talia Sh Shire, great, great actress. Wonder why she she doesn't do much more stuff anymore. Yeah, I heard, I did hear about this. I never actually saw it, but I know I was on a out and about that I did see. Huh. I would definitely give this a look, and for a dollar, that's probably worth chat, uh, checking out now. That's interesting. Uh, they also got, oh, they got the DVD of Yoga Hosers. I'll pass. Um, they've got. Who We Are Now, a beautiful film about sacrifice and redemption. I thought we might have seen this before, but maybe not. It's got Jimmy Smith, Leah Thompson, Chad Zachary Quinto, Jason Biggs, Emma Roberts. Damn, that is a nice cast, man. Holy cow. That's a great cast, dude. Huh. Uh, recently released from prison, but working with... Huh. That's interesting. I would definitely give this a look just for the cast alone. That's really cool, man. Just for the cast alone, that is really awesome, dude. I definitely would. Who we are now. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, let's see. They also have uh, garlic and gunpowder here with James and James. I think we saw this before the last time as well. The cover looks really, really crazy and insane, man. 
It really does. It looks really cool. Never underestimate the power of stupidity. Great. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I thought we may have seen this before, but maybe I was wrong. I don't know. Huh. That looks really cool, man. That does indeed. Garlic and gunpowder. That does look interesting. Um, let's see. They have six days. I think we may have seen six days before with Jamie Bell and Mark Strong, Abby Cornish. I, I think we may have... I think we may have seen this before, man. Huh. Uh, there are six days swap. Oh, it's sort of like sort of a hostage situation and them taking on hostages. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Six days. That's interesting. Huh. Six days. That's interesting indeed. Yeah, six days here, there. Um, they've got Latin four in one collection. That's interesting. Lies in plain sight, charm school, sueno, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one. That's, I'm, I'm not even going to even try to butcher it, dude. Oh my god, man. This is... I, I don't really... I guess I don't really watch a lot of Latin movies now that I come to think of it. Because I really don't know any of these movies. Probably really cool for the Latin crowd, but no, I really have no idea about any of these ones. Some of them look kind of interesting, actually. I mean, do you guys know about any of these? I mean, definitely let me know. Hmm. And let, let me know how you might pronounce that word, because, yeah, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Yikes. Uh, over there, we've got over here... Madeline Mary Musical Melodies for the Kids. Not bad. Um... Baby class little lessons for for the little ones. Interesting. Um, what's your number again? Learning to drive. Dead man's burden. Oh, that looks interesting. Sort of a sort of western, sort of outlaw type of movie. Huh. You guys know I'm, I'm kind of hit and miss with, with my westerns. I like westerns, but I'm not in love with westerns. I mean, there has to be like a western that really hits me very, really good for me to really enjoy it, guys, for, for sure. Hmm. Doesn't look half bad, but is it worth a gamble for a dollar? Probably for a dollar it's worth a, ga a gamble. But again, I'm not a huge fan of my westerns, though. Uh, they've got Numb. That's interesting. Greed knows no limits. Well, that's true. Uh, chilling thriller. Huh. Numb. What is this about? Um, Battlestar Galactica and Dawn. Uh, Dawn. Huh. Old man wandering blindly through the snow. Huh, that looks interesting. Kind of like sort of this thriller where they're trying to survive in, in, sort, in sort of the um, sort of the harsh conditions and everything. I, I like these type of movies. If you ever saw that movie, uh, the movie F uh, Frozen, and not the kids animated movie, the, the horror film, like, like that was really cool. So I like sort of in the elements type of things, even like the gray or something. So this could be cool. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, they've also got Lou Ferrigno, baby, and in instant death. Look at that. Revenge is an understatement. Hey, girl, Lou Ferrigno, instant death. Oh, that is interesting. Lou Ferrigno, man, I haven't seen him in something in, whoo, man, quite a long time. Yo, said I miss the underbelly of the English organized crime. into a rampage of fury and violence that not even the brutal gangster prepare for it. Yeah, don't, don't fuck with Lou Ferrigno, man. Lou Ferrigno, man, used to be the hog, man. Man, don't fuck with that guy. This looks like a really cool sort of like, like shoot em up sort of revenge action movie. No, I never heard of this one at all, man. But if it's got Lou Ferrigno, man, and he's starring in this, it might be worth a look, dude, because it's Lou Ferrigno, man. I mean, he's, he's cool. He's a cool guy. Uh, I like that cover, though. Ah, that's cool, man. We've also got over here 
Mid-range, everyone deserves a second chance. Huh. What is this here? Most impactful sports movie I've ever seen. Okay. I like these type of sort of sports stories, as I've said before. I, I like these sort of overcoming adversity type of m movies. Is it sort of the most impactful sports movie he's ever seen. I don't know. I've seen quite a lot of cool, impactful sports movies, even very cool, impactful sports movies about basketball. Uh, Love and Basketball is a really great one. Um, that that uh, Spike Lee movie is, is really good as well with Denzel. That that one's really awesome as well. This this one might be good. I don't know. Give, give it a chance. Let me know what you guys think of Midrange. Um, then they have... Despite the falling snow, Charles Dance is in this. Well, Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah, from uh, the Mission Impossible stuff. You can betray your country, but not your heart. Oh, that's interesting. Huh, what is this about? Hmm. I'm going to spy for... It can only unravel a decade later in 1990s New York. Oh, it's based on a novel. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Uh, very interesting. Sort of espionage, cold war, falling in love type of movie. I've seen these type of movies before, and they're really intriguing. Well, not all of them, but I think some of them can be really cool. That's, hmm. I, I, that looks kind of cool, actually. Definitely let me know what you think of Despite the Falling Snow. I think it kind of looks cool, honestly. Huh. Uh, strange, strange ones. With Alex Pettiford, and I haven't seen him in something in a long time. I think the last thing I saw him in was like either I am number four or that um, that movie where he, he he looks all like messed up. I, th I think it was called like Beastly. I think it was where I saw him in it. The Strange Ones. This is about utterly hypnotic, sensational, a bracing, unpredictable movie. Around two travelers, but only brothers, they make their way. Secrets and lies and, and darkness and possibly, you know, betrayal and very interesting sort of must be like a cool little sort of like dark thriller. I haven't seen th this guy again in, in a long time, so I'll be interested to check this one out. Huh. Interesting. Uh, have Fade Away. You only get one shot with... Emilio Rivera, Clifton Powell, I mean Ford. I believe this guy was, was in Three from Hell, I think. He kind of looks really familiar like he was in Three from Hell. Yo, yeah, 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 he was. Yeah, he was in, in, in Three from Hell. Oh, the high school. I like sort of that sort of idea, that message of... You know, you're, you, you know, you're in a city where, like, there's a lot of crime and drugs and you're trying to get out and trying to make something of yourself and uh, an opportunity. And, yeah, that, that, I've seen these sort of, sort of stories, lifting themselves up type of movies. Huh, I like the cover, though. The cover looks re really cool. Another sort of basketball inspirational movie. Seeing, seeing a few of those here at uh, Dollar Tree. Uh, I got... Two Lovers, which we saw the last time with Gwyneth Paltrow and Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, the Layover with Alexandra Daddario and Kate Upton. The flight is off. The flight is on. The Layover. God. Huh. I really like Alexandra Daddario. I haven't seen her in everything, and some of the stuff I've seen her in is kind of kind of crappy but she's really good in a lot a lot of the, of the movies she's done that's really interesting really gorgeous women by by the way they are gorgeous huh fighting over this guy mr four sisters kind of like a cool little com comedy i like alexander daddario more than kate upton but kind of looks like an interesting little comedy though hmm i don't know how that then they also have Life with Robert Pattinson, Dane DeHaan, Joel Egerton, and Ben Kingsley. Damn, that's a, quite a cast, man. Dane DeHaan is a magnetic James Dean. No, oh, dude, I've never heard of this one. Wow, this is really interesting. Life. I mean, the 
months leading up to the premiere of Dean's infamous role. Oh, this is interesting. God, I like these type of, of movies. Dude, and, and Dane DeHaan's a really great actor. Robert Pattinson, man, Robert Pattinson has gotten a lot of flack over the years for that Twilight stuff. And I get it, dude. I really honestly do. But he has more than made up for it, man. He's done so many awesome roles. This looks like a really interesting movie. Huh. Life. No, I never heard of this one. I definitely got to check this one out, man. There's always these cool sort of indie titles that come out with these big name actors and sometimes I never hear of and they never come to theaters unfortunately, but yeah, it's definitely worth checking out and looking up guys. Huh, really interesting. Then the next thing I'm seeing over here guys is they have the Virginian. Ghost Justice is a loaded gun. Trace Atkins, another one with Trace Atkins, man, damn. He is, he is just really loving getting into m movies, whether he's good at it or not. Who the hell knows? Ron Perlman is in this as well. You know me. I love Ron Perlman, man. Love me some Ron Perlman. Sometimes the law needs to be broken. Yeah, look at, look at him, man, being badass in the West. Yeah, Ron Perlman, baby. You know, as much as I love Ron Perlman, man, and I do, this... I'm not sure, man, because again, you know, Westerns, dude, a lot of them are really miss. Because for me, I have pretty high standards uh, for Westerns. I mean, my favorite Western is, is High Noon. And then there's other stuff like Unforgiven and Tombstone. And I mean, there's quite a few really great ones. So you got to be really phenomenal, dude. I doubt the Virginian is there, but it'd be worth it just, just for Ron Perlman alone. Hmm. Uh, you've got... Pretty bad actress. What the hell? Got... Oh, William Bell here. Oh, that's interesting. Really bad actress. She's looking like she's having a pretty damn bad day. All the makings of a killer comeback. What is this, dude? What is this, man? She gets kidnapped, sort of a hostage comedy in some ways? Oh, this is really interesting, dude. No, I had never heard of this one before at all. Pretty bad actress. I like the cover, though. The cover looks kind of just, just like uh, like this is going to be a dark sort of comedy in some ways. Huh. Dude. That was kind of interesting. Huh. Uh, they got who we are now. Uh, a gift horse with John Schneider. And Henny Brook, we've got... Oh, Dove approved. Ooh, can't 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 go a video these days without Dove approved. Take life by the reins. Let me guess. It's a woman and her horse, and it's about faith and having faith, and yeah, pretty well, pretty much. It looks like an older film, though. It doesn't look like anything newer, unless unless it is a newer film, and the cover looks very like cover looks very nineties. Or like really early 2000s. Huh. Eh, that's interesting. Not sure I would get it, but if you're a fan of horses, why, why the heck not? Hmm. I got Odyssey with Armand Asante. Dude, I hadn't seen him in something that long last time. The epic miniseries event. Oh, is this about... Oh yeah, sort of, sort of, um, I believe like Helen of Troy or something like that. It's just Athena, stuff, stuff like that, I think. Isabella Rossellini. That's it. Okay, I like some of the, I like some of the actors here. Not sure I would get this because it's a mini-series event. If it was just a movie, maybe. It looks okay. I, I don't think I ever saw this one, though. I do like Ar Armand Asante, but some of these sort of miniseries epics, sort of Greek epics, not really a fan of. Let me know if you are, though. Hmm. Uh, they've also got Afternoon Delight. <laughs> the Cure for the Common Marriage. That's interesting, and it's not a guy. It's a woman going into, apparently, a strip club. Uh, Juno Temple is in this. Jane Lynch. That's interesting. Hmm. Afternoon Delight. 
a provocative comedy about sex, marriage, and finding yourself again after the light. And she goes, uh, she takes her husband, says with saving your dog. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that I like that. And it's one of Tarantino's top ten movies of 2013. I don't always trust some of Tarantino's picks, but if he's if, if he's interested in it, I definitely would be. I like that. I like the cover. It looks really interesting. It had, huh. No, I never heard of Afternoon Delight. Recommended by Quentin Tarantino. Hmm. Oh, don't want to drop it. Uh, you've got Red vs. Blue Season 10. The Perfect Day. Dean Cain, yeah. Dean Cain's another one that's sort of one of those kings of, um, of straight-to-DVD movies. Perfect Day. It kind of looks like a cheesy cover. It, 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 it's sort of... Uh, it's sort of America and 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 the SEAL teams and you know we're we're badass, but it kind of looks a little cheesy though. Um, a film by 9/11 survivors and you. Oh okay. We never seal. Oh, okay, it's sort of on honoring them and it's about. Okay. Huh. The cover doesn't really do it any justice though. I don't really like the cover, but. But the, the snap is not bad, though. Huh. Perfect day. I, again, I do like, like good warm move movies. It just depends on the actual movie. You know what I mean? Hmm. Uh, they've got The Flock with Richard Gere, Claire Danes. I believe we've seen this before. Somewhere we might have. He has many faces. He has seen them all. Richard Gere, dude. I, I like Richard Gere, dude. And Richard Gere doesn't do a lot of work anymore. But I used to love his work back in the day. And truth be told, actually... He he doesn't live in my area, but his father actually does because I've seen him at the grocery store. Swear to God, I've seen Richard Gere at the grocery store with his father, and I've I've kind of wanted to go up to Richard Gere and be like, hey, you know, can I can I get your autograph or something? But I I don't want to do that, dude. But I I've, I've thought about it. I, was, I remember I was at the deli at like Tops once, and like the deli lady was like, oh, you you see over there? I'm like what? It's like, dude, it's Richard Gere. Like, what? Richard Gere? Get out of here. He's like, he's like, it's Richard Gere. And I'm like, and so I looked over and I'm like, it was actually fucking Richard Gere. So, crazy enough, you know, seeing or seeing a random movie star at, at a gr regular grocery store, but I guess they gotta eat too. Oh, interesting. I do like him though, but he, he, he hasn't done something really good in a while. Hmm. They have, uh, New Line Planet Dungeons and Dragons. Holy shit, dude. Wow, man, I did not think they would have this. Dungeons and Dragons, man, whoa. Dude, this movie, dude, I remember this one. This one was not that great, dude. This was, if you're a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, this movie kind of, I'm not going to lie, this movie kind of takes a crap all over Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, I know there are some people that like this movie. It, it's kind of like Super Mario Brothers, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know... It took an interesting idea and it kind of, it kind of really kind of screwed it up in a way. I like Super Mario Brothers and I kind of have a soft spot for Dungeons and Dragons, but not really. It's still, it's still really not that good. But they tried, man, and they failed hardcore. I wonder when this is going to get rebooted at some point. Well, that's interesting, dude. A New Line Platinum series. I haven't seen one of those in a long ass time. Woo! Wow. Damn. Uh, they got The Drowning, which I believe we saw last time as well. Julie Stiles, Josh Charles, saw that one. Um, they've got Short Term 12 with Brie Larson and John Gallagher Jr. I think we saw this one last time as well, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe we did. Um, I do like Brie Larson, but Brie Larson gets a lot of flack from a lot of people, man. I mean, she's not the best actress in the world, but I'm going to tell you something, man. She certainly ain't the worst, and she does some interesting projects. I overall like Brie Larson, but I know, again, some people are not always the biggest fans of hers. Hmm. I, I, I still think she, she's actually... I, I still think she's good, though. Hmm. Uh, they have... The Rendezvous. Treasure, guns, rocket launchers, and camels. Okay. Uh, interesting. Uh, the Rendezvous... A Jewish doctor, yeah, Jewish, yeah, get those Jews in there, baby. Uh, and a Muslim State Department employee unwittingly become involved in a mystery that could change. 
Oh, Clive Wolf's already inspired. Oh, it's inspired by a popular novel. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Okay, it's kind of like a love story wrapped around sort of, you know, you know, getting into the sort of like, you know, U.S. government sort of secrets and everything. That looks okay. Looks all right. Like that stuff with like rocket launchers and camels. I'm like, okay, well, that, that definitely had my interest. All right. Hmm, the bad. Uh, they have... Oh, they have Hollow Man. Oh, really cool. Elizabeth Shue and Kev Bacon Dude. Wow, this is really cool that they, they have the DVD of this. Director's cut. Wow, man. You know, honestly, I really... I, I really love this movie, dude. This movie is not... Doesn't get as much love as I think it should, man. I think Kevin Bacon is awesome in here. Elizabeth Shue, Josh Brolin, way before like Josh Brolin became like what he is now, which is like uh, Thanos and Cable and everything. And he was still sort of a small time kind of actor, but dude, this is so good. The, the the visual effects in here are awesome. Kevin Bacon plays a great sort of twisted bad guy. Elizabeth Shue is awesome in here. I I love Elizabeth Shue. She doesn't do enough work, man. Dude, this is a great movie, dude. It kind of takes the Invisible Man premise and, and, and twists it a bit. I like it quite a bit, dude. And great cover, man. God, I like that, dude. Great fu a fucking movie, dude. Great fucking movie. Damn. Uh, they have the DVD of Innocence. Her blood is their fountain of youth. Sophie Curtis, Graham Phillips, Kelly Riley. Uh, suspenseful psychological teen thriller. Terrifying hallucinations, dubious suicides, blood rituals, welcome to Helmuth Press. As a 16-year-old, whether her life couldn't... That's interesting. Sort of a, a teen thriller with sort of blood rit rituals. Very interesting, man. I don't know how good this is, but I, I like the, the synopsis, though. That alone would definitely get me interested in checking this one out. And I like the cover. They're kind of like feasting on blood. Very cool. Hmm, interesting innocence. Uh, I've got... Holy shit, they have Punchline! Dude, have you guys ever seen Punchline? Dude, Sally Field, Tom Hanks. Oh man, this is a great movie about like Tom Hanks being the sort of up-and-comer sort of comedian and Sally Field wanting to be a comedian and they sort of friend one another and yet there's this sort of rivalry at the same time. Really great sort of comedy man the performances are great and this is one where not many people talk about tom hanks this is a sort of sort of movie with him in it but they really should this is a great movie punchline is awesome wow dude that's really cool that the doctor has this yeah this is a really great sort of stand-up comic type of mo mo movie dude it really is i think it's one of the best ones honestly i really do man just for tom hanks and sally field alone that's really great. Wow, I can't believe they have that. Um, the Walking Deceased. Okay, we've got a, a spoof movie right here from none of the creators of scary movies. Well, that says it all right there. I imagine a world where the dead are smarter than the living. Sometimes that's the honest to God truth. Uh, he's sort of doing this Michael Jackson pose. What the hell is this? Yeah, it's one of those really stupid spoof movies. God, there, there's not many spoof movies that I really like, guys. Like I said, The Naked Gun stuff, Hot Shots Part 2. I do like Not Another Teen Movie, but outside of that, man, I gotta admit, I mean, some of the scary, scary movies are cool, but yeah, these these ones are sort of just the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, oh, I gotta pass on that one. Uh, they've got Spreading Darkness. I think we saw this the last time with Eric Roberts, Dominic Swain, James Duvall, Murder Mystery Mayhem. And again, talk about another person that's sort of like the straight to, to DVD like cult king, Eric Roberts, man. I, I, I would love to meet Eric Ra Roberts. Such a, seems like would be a really cool guy. He just takes whatever project he can get, though. Spreading darkness. Hmm. Sort of a cheesy sort of action movie. Eric Roberts does a lot of them. 
Uh, we also got here the Yankle, which I know we saw the last time, which did look interesting. Hmm. Yeah, this, this, this one did look interesting the last time. Uh, they've got uh, more stuff for babies. They've got Don't Forget About Me, four movie collection. Damn. The Freshman, No Small Affair, Fresh Horses, and Immediate Family. Oh, that's an interesting one. Sort of sort of like a Brat Pack 4-pack, but not actually your typical Brat Pack 4-pack. You know what I'm saying? Very interesting. Um, there's a few of these that I've seen. Like, I've seen No Small Affair. I've seen The Freshman, but I've, I don't think I've seen Immediate Family, and I don't think I've seen Fresh Horses. I don't think I've ever heard of that one. This one's got Molly Ringwald in it, it looks like. Huh. No, I saw, there's a few of these that I've never seen, though, man. Huh. I've never seen this four-movie collection set before. This is something de definitely new to, to me. Very interesting title. Like I said, it's not the sort of popular titles that you'd see. It's more sort of niche, sort of 80s or early 90s titles. That's interesting. If you guys know about a few of these, definitely let me know. Don't forget about me, four-movie collection. Very interesting set. I'm also seeing they have... Final Girl with Abigail Breslin and Wes Bentley. Look at that, dude. That looks cool. Vengeance shall be hers. Look at that, dude. That looks awesome. With her with the axe and everything. No, I don't know what this is, man. Never heard of this one. The hunted becomes the hunter. Every night, four boys track a young blind girl into meeting them in the forest right daily. They mess with the wrong girl. Oh, great. Yeah, this looks really cool, dude. I like that. Sort of a cool little horror film where she turns the tables on the guys. Really interesting. I like Abigail Breslin, man. And I can't wait to see her in um, Zombieland 2. That should be really fun, man. Zombieland 2 should be really cool, man. I'm, I'm hoping, at least. It's, I'm crossing fingers it's going to be. But Abigail Breslin, dude. Hope, hope she does more horror stuff. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, they also got The Fire Next Time. Look at that, dude. That's a really cool cover with, like, Craig, uh, Craig T. Nelson and the fire behind them. That's really interesting. The fire next time. Uh, the future is closer than you think. In the near future, the unrelenting heat waves. Kind of like what we're dealing with now. Through his harrowing odyssey, the morning face stands as a... Of courage, faith, and... F okay, sort of like a family united against crisis type of movie. Interesting. I like Craig T. Nelson. I've never heard of this one, though. This must be an oldie. I've never heard of this one at all. Guys, if you've heard of this, definitely let me know. The Fire Next Time. Kind of looks cool, actually. Old school title with Craig T. Nelson. Never heard of it. Interesting stuff with the Dollar Tree. Uh, they got that Queens of the Ring movie. They've got... American Wrestler... Speed dating. Her. Oh, wow, they have her. Wow, dude, I can't believe they have this. That's really cool. Dude, this is a great movie, man. Joaquin Phoenix is absolutely awesome in this movie, man. He's really great. This is this is a really, really funny and yet very dark movie at the same time, man. And and and, and I'm telling you, man, I mean Oh, he just he just does a great job here. Joaquin Phoenix does an awesome job. Amy Adams does Scarlett Johansson as the sort of um, the sort of intelligence that's sort of in love with him. She does a great job here as well. And Joaquin Phoenix, man, he does such amazing work, dude. I can't wait to see what he does with with the Joker. But oh man, dude, if you guys have not seen her, I would definitely give this a, a chance. It's sort of in this sort of futuristic, slightly futuristic world where people are very obsessed with their phones, almost to the point of almost having relationships with them. We're getting to that point, so her is becoming a little bit kind of scary, but really fascinating stuff, dude. I, I really love love this movie. Uh, they got the ring stuff. They got the superhero stuff there. Superhero stuff. Dirty Shame. The Life, Gates of the Ghost, Uncanny, Storage Dare, 
Um, four film favorites of Find Your Courage and Strength. Two Say, Preaching to the Pastor, Book of Songs, and Out Righteous. Very interesting four film collection here. Never seen any of them. They kind of have this sort of faith and com comedy mixed together type of movies. Which some of them are actually pretty good, but can't say all of them are pretty good, but some of them are. Huh. I've never seen a single one of them. But then again, I'm not hugely into this genre though, so I don't watch a lot of stuff in it. Are any of these movies worth it? Definitely let me know, guys. Huh. Interesting. Um, here, Free Runner, War, Uncanny, Chrome Skull, It Rest 2, Six Days. 10 by 10 with Luke Evans and Kelly Riley. Some secrets you can't escape. Huh. I really like Luke Evans quite a bit. I liked him in that Dracula movie. I thought that Dracula movie was really cool. Very underrated stuff, man. Lewis is a seemingly ordinary guy, but under the surface is a singular obsession. Revenge. Ooh, yeah, that looks really cool. Yeah, Luke Evans playing the sort of like sinister bad guy type of dude. Very cool. That's nice. I kind of like that. Like a cool little horror thriller. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, that's interesting. Um, they got Life, Afternoon Delight, Garlic and Gunpowder, Her. Oh, wow. They have Angels and Demons. Ooh, that's, that's really cool that they have Angels and, and Demons. I, I watched this movie, and I, I think out of the three films, I think this is probably the weakest of all of them. I really do. Like, I like the first movie, and I think the third movie is actually better than I think people give it credit for. But I think this second one is a little bit kind of convoluted and not as interesting. I still really like Tom Hanks as this character. I, I like some of the actors in here, like Ewan McGregor, but uh, I think the plot's a little weak on this one, guys. Hmm. Huh. This is the theatrical edition, though. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, I like the first and the third one, but the second one is not so much. Uh, let's see, they have that, they have... Oh, wow, they have the Sacrament. Wow, dude, I didn't even realize they would have something like this. Eli Roth presents, have you guys ever seen the Sacrament? The Sacrament is really interesting. I really like this movie quite a lot, about this sort of guy who's sort of almost like this this cult leader that sort of manipulates these people, and they're, they're just sort of trapped and having to try to get out, and it's... It's really sort of fascinating and interesting stuff, man. It really is. I think the guy who, who plays the call le leader here is terrifying. This is actually really good. The, sacri the sacrament is really interesting. I really like it a lot where they're trying to interview this guy and, and you know, just everything just goes wrong. Hell just rains down on these people. But, dude, wow, man. This is... This is really, this is, I'm just I'm surprised Dollar Tree would have this, but this is a really cool little horror movie. Definitely give this one a chance, guys. I know some of these sort of, uh, these director presents movies are not always the greatest, but this one's actually pretty, pretty good, honestly. Um, and they, let's see, they've got a five Freak Fest movie collection here. Very interesting. Uh, Killers from Space. Monster from a Prehistoric Planet, Destroy All Planets, Attack of the Monsters, and Sound of Horror. Right no, I've never actually seen any of these movies. Weird five movie freak fest. No, um... 1954, 1967, 1968, 1969. Wow, dude, some of these old school, like, Dude, I am a big fan of Creature Features. I love Creature Features, dude. I really do. This looks really interesting, man. Kind of cheesy and ridiculous, but that's sort of the 50s and 60s Creature Features for, for you, man. They're not exactly, you know, have the best buy a budgets and they're really B-movie style stuff, but that looks really cool, man. Creature Features. Kind of cool that they have a five-movie Creature Feature set, and for a dollar, you can't really beat it. <laughs> that's interesting. Um... See here, they have Life in a Small Town for movie collection. Now, we've been seeing a lot of these movie collections. Off the Map, Lone Star State of Mind, Dancer, Texas, and Falling from Grace. I may have seen one of these movies. 
These look really like old school mo movies, man, from back in the day. So I don't, there's a few of these that I don't really know about, honestly. Some really interesting, it looks like there's like one with Sam Elliott and interesting, sort of like small town life, sort of, sort of Texas living type of collection. Four Tales from the Heartland. No, I don't know anything about these, man. If you guys know anything, definitely let me know. That's interesting. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here. Layover Genesis with Olivia Grant, John Hanna. John, John Hanna was really good in, in the Mummy movies. I, I really liked him in those. Created to save us, evolved to erase us. Very interesting. Uh, Super Subterranean Silo, The Last Remnants of Humanity. Oh, that's interesting. Sort of like this sci-fi tale of, of, of humanity and trying to save people and fight, fighting against sort of the bad guys type of movie. Interesting. I don't know how good it is. It, it, it has potential. I like sort of the sci-fi aspect of it. It looks a little cheesy, though. Huh. Never seen it, but I do like John Hanna. And I like the cover, actually. The cover's really cool. Hmm. It's interesting. Uh, let's see. Layover, Flock... Uh, The Summit. Oh, interesting. With Bruce Greenwood, James Purefoy, Stephen McCaddy, Christopher Plummer. Very interesting. Kind of, kind of a cheesy cover, though. A corrupt government, a deadly secret, and a race against time. Damn right, now. Look at that. Interesting cast, though. The Summit is an uncompromising must-see event series. Oh, it's, oh, oh, it's a miniseries. Okay. A screen and power. Oh, that's interesting. Like I said, I'm not huge into miniseries too much, but there there is certain ones that I would definitely give a chance to, and this one seems to be one that that I like the cast and I like the synopsis. It looks kind of interesting to me. And then the only other thing I'm seeing over here, guys, is they have the DVD of the horror anthology VHS right here. Wow, man, really nice. That's really cool to see see this horror anthology here man really cool and there's been actually a, quite a lot of like horror stuff this time around man some really cool horror stuff but if you guys have not actually ever seen vhs definitely watch it i really love a lot of horror anthologies there's some really great horror anthologies out there and i think this is a really good one it's not great by any means it's not like the most perfect horror anthology you've ever seen but I really like some of the stories, especially there's a story about this sort of uh, creepy woman that they take back to a to a motel room and they're going to like, you know, I guess kind of use an abuser and something really happens. And this chick was really creepy, man, and scary as hell. And there's some, there's some really great creepy stories here, man. I really like it. And I like the whole like movie wrapped around this idea of like the VHS tapes and everything. Uh, it feels very old school. It feels very, very uh, uh, menacing and terrifying and scary, and I really like it. I think it's one of the better ones to come out in in a long time. I really do. The sequel, I, I'm not a huge fan of the sequel. To be honest with you, I think the sequel is is not as good. But I think the first VHS here is actually really interesting, guys, and it's really cool to see it here at, at the Dollar Tree. I was not expecting that whatsoever. Very cool, man. Very cool indeed. Oh, man. Well, dude, that is really interesting here. Really interesting indeed. A lot of really great titles this time around, guys. Really great stuff. Really surprised this time around, man. Some really great stuff. More DVDs than Blu-rays, but still a lot of variety in selection. All right, guys. Well, let's head out. This time around, guys, the variety is really fascinating. You have a lot of... Like more well-known titles, you have a lot of cool sort of well-known horror stuff, you have a lot of cool little indie titles sprinkled in there as well. A lot of really interesting B-movies. Last time I was here for the sale, they didn't really have a lot of big name titles that a lot of people would know. They had more like a lot of those indie titles. Here is definitely much more sort of sprinkled in a lot more different variety of stuff but a lot of really interesting and fascinating movies and a lot of stuff i had never really heard of before so that was really fascinating and there's a lot of really cool pickups 
that you guys can get this time around. Some really fascinating and interesting titles, man. And only for a dollar, you really honestly can't beat it, guys. Not bad, especially here. More DVDs than Blu-rays, but still really great variety. All right, let's head to the next location and see what we'll find. All right, everybody, we are at our second Dollar Tree location right here, guys. And uh, it's been pretty plentiful so far just at the first location alone. So let's hope that this Dollar Tree can have just as much selection and some cool variety to show off. Let's head in and find out. All right, everybody, we are in at the Dollar Tree here with the Blu-rays and DVDs that this Dollar Tree has. And they have a lot of selection here, a lot of DVDs, guys. And the first thing I'm seeing over here is they have the 10 here with Paul Rudd. I've shown this a few times in some of the uh, Dollar Tree videos. I did pick this one up. It's actually pretty funny. I, I did like this one quite a bit. Um, it's kind of it kind of makes fun of the whole like you know religious stuff and Paul Rudd is pretty funny in it man and I I love Paul Rudd so anything with Paul Rudd I kind of give a chance to you know mo for, for the most part I do he's he's great dude almost in anything he's really awesome and the guy like never ages for some reason he seems to be the same age all the time crazy dude they have learning to drive they have the ten the ten the ten the Right, the falling snow, the five movie freak fest right there, which still looks pretty cool, honestly. But it still looks cool. They've got Dynamite Warrior from the creators of The Protector, Born to Fight, and Ongbok. That's interesting. I've never heard of this one before. Dynamite Warrior. That looks pretty cool. What's this about? Um, the. A young man fueled by grief and bent on revenge after witnessing his parents' murder. Also, he's like he's out for for revenge and taking everybody out there wronged him and interesting I've I've never heard of Dan Chapone from Born to Fight. I've never even seen Born to Fight I don't know if he's a good martial artist or not it's a lot of these martial arts guys I've never heard of to be honest with you. So a lot of them sort of pass me by but is it? I don't know is, is he good? Is this a good m movie? I don't know. I like some Hong Kong movies, but not a lot of them Oh, definitely let me know if this is a good martial arts movie. I like Ong Bak, and I think the protector's cool. Hmm, let me know. Uh, they've got the 10, Her, Genesis, Layover. Oh, the first season of Just Shoot Me. Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, cool. I actually, I used to really like this show. Back in the day, I really did. I used to watch it, man, and... I thought it was pretty, I thought David Spade was really good in this as well, and David Spade, he's, he, David Spade's kind of hit or miss for me. I like some of the stuff he's done, and then other stuff I think is sort of really, kind of really just stupid for stupid sake, but this time period in his career, I like Just Shoot Me, and I thought it was a really fun show. Interesting, they have season one. Hmm. Huh. If you have not got into this and like David Spade or some of those like comedies from like the 90s, definitely give this one a chance, guys. Huh. Hey, guys. Gardens of Stone. Francis Ford Coppola. What is this? James Caan, James Earl Jones, Angelica Houston, D.B. Sweeney, Dean Stockwell. Holy shit. Wow. I have never heard, heard of this before. Super Tanatan, an absolute magnificent cast makes this movie zing. From director Francis Coppola. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, and I thought I actually knew everything that Francis Ford Coppola did, but I guess not. I might have to give this a look. I really like Francis Ford Coppola as a director. His later stuff is hit and miss. I do like The Rainmaker. And I like some of the stuff he, he, he did, of course, Godfather and, you know, everything like that is great apocalypse. Now, he's a great filmmaker. I did not know about this one. I definitely got to give this one a look, man. Huh, Gardens of Stone. It's interesting. Uh, they also have a street cat named Bob with Luke Treadaway with Bob as Bob. <laughs> okay. Interesting right there. That's interesting. 
Huh, what is this about? And there is slowly root of it. Oh, so it's a guy and his adventures with his cat, pretty much, right? Oh, okay. Looks interesting, I guess, with with a a street a street cat named Bob. Kinda of, kinda of like almost riffing on a street cart name a street car named Desire. Kinda of like <laughs> interesting. Interesting sort of comedy, adventurous spirit type of movie. Hmm. Never heard of that one. Uh, the Don't Forget About Me 4 movie collection. Yankles. Of course, they have yoga hosers. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I love Kevin Smith, and I, I'm i not a Kevin Smith completist because there's certain movies of his that I don't have. I like most of his movies, but things like yo- yoga hosers, even though it's a dollar... And it shouldn't even be that much of a thing like, okay, it's a dollar, maybe buy it, but whew, this thing is so bad, dude. It really is, man. God. Yeah, this is a black stain on his career for sure. I mean, it's a dollar, it's got the slip on it, but I don't know. Uh, Moby Dick with Patrick Stewart, the epic miniseries event. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. You know, they've made so many movies about Moby Dick, man. I know there was one with like Chris Hemsworth, and there's there's been a ton of them, man. And and Pat, Patrick Stewart is really great in these sort of period pieces, playing these sort of characters. He's a he's a really great character actor. Moby Dick, huh? Like I said, I'm not into big miniseries and everything, but I do really like Patrick Stewart, man. He's a really great goddamn actor, huh? And him being in a Moby Dick movie could be really cool, hmm. Uh, yoga hosers. Ah, they do have that loose cannons and uh, another U uh, DVD co- combo set here. Dude, I'm telling you, just for Aykroyd and Gene Hackman alone on loose cannons, give it a chance, dude. I'm telling you. I haven't watched this movie in years, but it's stuck with me. And I thought I would never see it out anywhere, but that is awesome, man. Yeah, definitely get, get a look on this one because it's, it's, oh, it's so fun, dude. I really had a ball watching this when I was really younger. And, oh, man, I love Dan Aykroyd. Uh, they got The Miracle of Jesus, The Greatest Adventure. Okay. Uh, the Ten, Numb, Final Girl, Sacrament, Afternoon Delight, Little Girl, Spreading Darkness, The Five Movie Freak Fest, Drowning, Six Days, Ten by Ten, Con Man, we actually found the other one that had the slip on it, but this one doesn't have the slip, but still for, for a dollar. Can't really beat it, though. Uh, let's see here. They have Son of Batman, a DC Universe original movie. I've only started to watch a few of the DC animated movies, so I haven't watched them all. I don't know about this one. You guys always tell me that the, the DC animated movies are really good, so... I think, I think this one probably is going to be good as well, right? Son of Batman. It seems it seems interesting, huh? Maybe. Let me know about Son of Batman. Let's see. Uh, her syrup. Interesting with Amber Heard and Brittany Snow. Oh, that's interesting. What in the hell is this about? Based on the best. Seller. Okay, it's based on a book. Fresh out of school with a degree in marketing, Scat will do anything to prove. That's not a great name, dude. If your name is Scat, that's really not a good name, dude. Uh, armed with a brilliant product concept that gives new meaning to the old saying, sex sells. This is boss, the beautiful mysterious sex. Scat soon discovers that image and images. Uh, dude, dude, first of all, change your name from Scat, bro. Um, it. It looks interesting, sort of like a a sexy sort of like thriller, maybe. Hmm, I've never heard of syrup. Interesting. Uh, con man, six days with the slip. Um, pretty bad actress. More loose cannons. Uh, we've got drowning. Uh, spring darkness. Short term twelve. Fast as Hell, the three movie collection. This is like really aping off of Fast and the Furious. Look at that cover, man. 
That really is like, hey, Fast and Furious sells, so let's make it look like Fast and Furious. It's got the Junkman, Deadline, Auto Theft, and Gone in 60 Seconds 2? I didn't even know they made a Gone in 60 Seconds 2. Swear to God, I did not even know that, man. Whoa. Really? These seem like the bottom of the barrel of, like, racing action movies, dude. May, may, maybe they're good, but I have not a clue, man. I mean, Gone in 60 Seconds, too. I, that dude, that must have went under the radar. Never saw it. Yeah, that's, yeah I think this thing is pro, bo, bottom of the barrel. It's probably just, just aping off of the success of Fast and Furious and said, let's make a cool cover that kind of looks like it so somebody will buy this sucker. Uh, yeah, I don't know, dude. Let me know what you guys think of these movies. That's weird. Gone in 60 seconds, too, of all things. Uh, Innocence. Lockout with Dylan Baker. Justice doesn't wait for the law. Damn right. Dylan Baker. I've liked Dylan Baker in a few things, like those those Spider-Man movies. I thought he was really good uh, good in those things, man. Next con returns home after 20 years in prison to discover that his son has become the target of... Well, that's interesting. I, I kind of like that. It's sort of like a, a prison revenge movie. It's interesting. With Dylan Baker. I like Dylan Baker quite a bit. I liked him in that movie with John Candy. And I forget the mo movie now. And that movie with John Candy, he, he, starts to, like, he starts to fall apart. Like, his body parts are like he's losing teeth and he's losing, like, hair and everything. Like, that, that was a great role for him. I forget the name of the movie, but he was awesome in that. Hmm. Uh, Sacrament, Fast from Hell, Final Girl, Splinter, the year's best beast. Interesting. From Magna, a young couple retreats to the wilderness for a romantic camping weekend, but it's inspired by when they are carjacked by an escape. Oh, and they get, it's the horror of trying to escape from this guy and everything, sort of escape from this, this convict killer. Oh, that's interesting. Huh, I have never actually heard of this one. Splinter. I like the cover, though. The cover looks really cool. And I think... Yeah, it's sort of... Sort of like some, somebody stalking them and they're, they're trying to escape. Yeah, that looks cool. I, I like those type, type of, like, like, you know, ones. That's interesting. Huh, Splinter. They've got... Oh, they've got Entourage the movie. You know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've never seen a single episode of Entourage... I had no interest in Anuraj, man. I really didn't. It's not that Anuraj is, is terrible, exactly. I'm sure it's really good. I've just never had an impulse to actually watch it. And so I don't really want to watch the movie because I'm probably going to be incredibly lost. Hmm. I mean, the cast is cool here. I love Jeremy Piven, man. Jer Jer Jeremy Piven is awesome, but it kind of just, you know... Again, if you if you're into the show, maybe the movie is good. But if, I haven't even watched any of this stuff, so I don't I don't know. I mean, let me know what you guys think of Entourage. Hmm. They've got Red Hook Summer right here. Spike Lee joint. I believe we saw this one other time, man. I really love Spike Lee, man. Spike Lee is an awesome filmmaker, man. I can't say I love everything Spike Lee's done, but I love the majority of the stuff he's done. He's he's really just one hell of a creative voice and. And, man, he, he makes some really bold movies. Whether you like them or not, you got to appreciate it. He makes a lot of bold stuff, man. Hmm. Um, a Thousand to One. Another, another inspirational basketball movie. Damn, we're seeing a, a lot of them these times. Uh, with Bo Bridges in this. Really? Based on another inspirational true story. Again, man, we're, you know, we're seeing a lot of these inspirational true stories. I... My favorite inspirational true story about basketball is, is Teen Wolf. I mean, if he can do it, then anybody can do it. So I, you know, I, I strive to be like him. That's, that's, my, that's my goal. I'll never achieve it, but that's my goal. <laughs> Interesting. Another, another basketball movie. Uh, the 10, the 10, Harold, which we did see, I believe, the last time as well. Napoleon Dynamite with a higher IQ. I really love Napoleon Dynamite, man. It's such an awesome movie. And this looks like a really fun little little film. The last time it looked like fun. Goes down as easily as a cup of lemonade on a hot summer day. Interesting. Hmm. 
be cyclist. His toughest competition is himself. Okay. The cinematography is simply captivating. Bike Messenger Phil Nash has always dreamed of competitive cycle racing. Oh, so he's getting into the cycle racing business and he's he's going to try to win the race and everything. Okay, another inspirational story, sports story. I don't know, it kind of looks just okay. It kind of looks kind of, you know, it's kind of generic though. Uh, there's not many actually exciting cyclist movies. I hate to say it, but really not. Hmm. Interesting. Um, the Flock, Hollow Man, Entourage, Laugh Out Loud double feature with Cheech and Chong's Nice Dreams and Things Are Tough All Over. I have to admit, I don't think I've seen these ones. I've seen, I've seen a few of the Cheech and Chong movies, but I can't say I've seen them all. I do really love Cheech and Chong, though. They're a great team and a great di dynamic and... They, they made some really wild and bizarre movies, but damn, were they fun. No, I never have seen some of these, man. It kind of looks cool. I would definitely be interested in checking this out. Some Teach and Chong movies I've never seen, seen before. Not half bad, guys. Dirty Shame, neutered version. 99 Homes we've seen before as well. Good cast on that. I'm also seeing here they have... Stuck. Two destinies about to collide with Stephen Ray and Mina Suvari. Man, I haven't seen Mina Suvari in something in a long time, guys. God, what was the last thing I saw her? I think I might have saw her in American Reunion? Maybe? I'm thinking about that now. It's been so long. Stephen Ray is really good. I, I really liked him in, um... Oh, God, that movie with Natalie Portman there. Oh, God, that's a, such a great, great film. I'm, I'm now blanking on it now that I'm thinking about it, but he's a really great, great actor. He's done a lot. I think he was also in The Crying Game, too, which is one, one fucked up movie, man. But he's a really great, great actor, man. Um, Mina Silvari, unforgettably, started as Brandy, a heart party and overworked nursing assistant. Deliriously, darkly humorous psychological thriller. Oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's interesting. That seems really dark, man. God, that seems really dark. I actually... That seems like a really cool movie, man. I'm surprised I never heard of this one, one before. Comedic, yet really dark and suspenseful. Nice. That sounds like a really interesting one. Mina Suvari. I'm glad she's doing more, more work, man. I really am. Uh, let's see what else they got. They got... What else we got over here? Oh, yeah. They got Day of the Mummy. Oh, look at this thing. God, this looks like garbage, dude. An ancient evil has been unleashed. Uh, yeah, that's this movie. Uh, Day of the Mummy. Danny Glover. Danny Glover's in this? Get out of here, man. Get ready for the thrill ride of your life. Welcome to Egypt. Oh, man, that is really interesting. Ah, uh, this is probably really cheesy as shit, guys. This is probably really bad, dude. It's probably really cheesy and really shitty, dude. The cover pretty much proves it, dude. Damn, man. I've said it before, man. They need they, they need to make better mummy movies because, man, they are trashing the mummy name big time, dude. Yo, and Danny Glover. I don't know why Danny Glover would be in something like this. It's weird, dude. Uh, let's see what else they got. They got... Death Fighter. That's interesting with Cynthia Rothrock. Really? Joe Lewis and Don the Dragon Wilson. Eye for an eye, soul for a soul. Look at that, dude. That, that, that was pretty cool and badass, man. An American cop witnesses his mentors murder in a trade deal going. They have to settle the score and get justice. Yeah, baby, look at this, man. Guys, it's been a while since I've seen Cynthia Rothrock in anything. Holy shit. I don't know how old this movie is, man. Kind of looks cool. Kind of really cheesy revenge justice movie. Yo, that looks cool. Hmm, interesting. Uh, let's see what else they got here. Uh, they got Dragon Age Redemption starring Felicia Day based on the blockbuster video game franchise with over 40 minutes of exclusive bonus material. Don't think I've ever actually heard, I don't think I've ever actually heard of the video game series, to be honest with you. 
Game of Thrones written. Rid oh, it was written by Felicia Day as well. I don't know, dude. Something tells me this is really cheesy, dude. I don't think I've ever heard of the video game stuff. I mean, I'm serious. I'm not much of a gamer anyways, but I think I've heard of that. That's very interesting. Felicia Day being in this. Yeah, I don't think this is really good, or at least don't look good to me, man. If you guys know anything about Dragon Age Redemption, let me know. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. They got... Dead Man's Burden, we saw before. Um, never Let Go. Instant Tath with Lou Ferrigno, which still looks pretty cool, honestly. They have a monster movie mix of 12 films, Alien Threat. A deadly Attack. It doesn't actually say what the movies are in here, though. It only says there's 12 f films in here, and for a dollar, I guess you can't go wrong with 12 films. However, they might be really shitty 12 films, so I would maybe be careful about that, guys. Um, yeah, 12 films, but they don't actually say what the films are, which kind of scares me. Hmm. Maybe, maybe for a dollar, give it a chance? Maybe? Um, uh, garlic and gunpowder, I've seen before. Life in a small town. Layover. Genesis. Ah, Punchline. They still still have Punchline. Great goddamn movie. Again, I'm telling you guys, definitely get 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 up on it. You won't be disappointed. I'm telling you. Crashing. A writer's best work is between the covers. Oh, very nice. Campbell Scott, Lizzie Kaplan. What in the world is this? There's nothing like a little something with two sexy codes. It sounds like a budding writer's dream. A best-selling first novel. Let's just. And a trophy wipe would all unravel one writer's block in a failed marriage. McMurray. It looks like this weird sort of sex comedy? A psychological thing? That looks really interesting. Crashing. Okay. Um, I like the cover alone. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they have Life, which looks really good. Ten. Best of Naked City. No, I've never seen anything about this. I don't even know about this show. Ten episodes. Eight hours. Robert Duvall? Walter Matthau, Gene Hackman, William Shatner, Jack Club. Really, those are guest stars? No, I've never heard of Naked City. Swear to God, man. No, I don't know anything about it. Let me know what you guys think of Naked City. Yeah, I know nothing, dude. Yeah, this, this one might have passed me by and know nothing about it. In interesting guest stars, though. God, wow. Yeah, no, definitely let me know. Hmm. Oh, they are burying the axe. Oh, wow, man. I, I remember watching this one. This is actually really good, man. I like burying the axe. I thought Anton Yelchin, who, rest in peace, man, it's a shame he's actually gone, dude. He was a great a actor. Ashley Green, Alexandra Daddario. It was a good sort of, like horror comedy which i i kind of liked i thought it was fun actually i really did and it's a movie by joe dante and joe joe dante is great man um you know gremlins he did gremlins 2 the howling he's, he's he's a great director dude that's a really that's a really cool find man that they have that it's really that wow actually get up on this not a bad horror horror comedy actually um her american wrestler queens of the ring dirty shame Upstream color. I I don't think I had ever seen this one, but I had heard of it. I heard it's a really great sort of sort of like psychological you know, like descent into madness type of movie. That's what I heard. And from the writer director of Primer. Now I thought Primer and I actually really liked Primer. I thought Primer was really good. I didn't I've never seen Upstream co Color though. I heard it's a pretty, I heard this movie's pretty good, man. I've heard good things about it. And it comes with the slip. Not bad at all. Uh, huh. Nice. I can't believe they have that here at the Dollar Tree. Uh, they have that. Courage and Strength. Four film favorite set. Learning to Drive. Uncanny. Chrome Skull. Dare. Have a War. Dolph Lundgren and Don't Kill It. Bring out more demon killing mayhem. 
I heard about this movie, but I never saw it. That he's actually... Yeah, he has to take down he has to take down a demon. He's this demon hunt hunter and he's he's with this car partner and they're you know, they're they're kicking ass and taking names type of movie. I heard this was good. I've heard people say they liked this movie, Don't Kill It by Dolph Lundgren, but I have not actually gotten a chance to watch it. I'm a huge fan of Dolph, dude. Dolph is awesome, so anything with Dolph I tend to kinda to wanna give a chance to. And a demon hunter movie could be really cool. Hmm. Don't kill it. They've got Final Girl, Street Cat Named Bob, Yankles, Friends for Life with Michael Flynn. Ah, dub approved right there. Four orphan wolf pups, a man facing a lonely future, and the act of kindness has saved them all. Huh. Is a story that will touch your heart. No, I don't think I ever actually heard about this movie either. One of those sort of like losing faith and and you know trying to you know trying to um, you know get in touch with with nature and and finding fam family and friends and everything, huh? In interesting. Friends for life. Interesting. Um, they also have Ad TV. They have Ad TV. That's really interesting. Dude, I didn't can't believe they have Ed TV here, man. It's the collector's edition of this, dude. Wow, man. Dude, I remember this movie. It's been a long time since I've seen it, though, to be honest with you. I remember liking it when it first came out, man. Great cast. Matthew McConaughey, Woody Harrelson, Elizabeth Hurley, Je uh, Jenna Elfman. Really cool m movie, man, about this guy that sort of has a camera fo following him all the time and... All the, all the wacky stuff that happens. This was in a very interesting period of Matthew McConaughey's career, man. And you don't even see, like, Jenna Elfman in stuff anymore. Dude, very interesting. Dude, I, I used to like that TV, but it's been so long, dude. And do you remember when DVDs used to say right, right on it, like, at, in the front, like, widescreen? Yeah, the good old days. Um, they have... Levity with Billy Bob Thornton, Morgan Freeman, Holly Hunter, and Kirsten Dunst. Wow, what a what a cast that is, man. Jesus, man, that is one hell of a cast. Good lord, dude. Uh, best with that, huh? It's fully released from prison after 22 years sentence. Haunted by his past and seeming loss in the present. Huh, that's really interesting. I have never heard of this movie, dude, and with a cast like this, I don't think this ever came to the theaters. If it did, it was like a really independent release I'd never heard of. Really interesting. Yo, no, I don't know much about it. Levity. Hmm. Uh, Afternoon Delight. Age of Kill. Six targets in six hours or London Burns. Very interesting. Hmm. No, I never heard of this one. This one looks like... Huh. This chaos reigns and bodies rise. Oh, that's interesting. No, I never heard, heard of this one before. It could be sort of a cool B-movie action shoot 'em up type of picture. Hmm. I've heard of Age of Kill. Upstream Color. They have um, the Four Barrel Combo Locked and Loaded collection with Attack Force with Steven Seagal, The Point Men, the Hunt for Eagle One and Walking Tall, Lone Justice. Jeez, look, look, look at these guys. Not exactly the, um, the, the A-list action uh, hero talent here, but um, I guess they're trying to do their best here. Very interesting, locked and loaded. Huh, more barrel collection. Interesting releases. I didn't know they made another Walking Tall m movie. I did not know that. The Hungry Eagle One Attack Force. Ah, Seagal and his action movies. Oh, boy. It looks okay. You know, for a dollar, maybe these cheesy action stuff, but, eh. Pat that. Uh, Rendezvous, we saw before. The Drowning. My 10. Pretty bad actor is Six Days. Oh, they got some Blu-rays here. They got Seal Team 8, which we saw before. Red vs. Blue, Season 10, The Power of Few, which we've seen before. 
<sighs> Yoga hosers, less said the better. Man from Holocene, which still looks really weird and cheap, but to get some of these actors, I don't know about this one, man. What's your number? Um, Scooby-Doo and, and Kiss, Rock and Roll Mystery Movie, looks really cool. Uh, Knucklehead with Alfre Woodard, A Fractured Mind, A Broken Soul, and Unbreakable Spirit. That looks interesting. I like Alfre Woodard. She's actually really cool. A sympathetic look at a character's uh, knucklehead pack on Motion Punch. Huh. Inter inter interesting. Huh. Knucklehead. Uh, when his brother disappears, mentally disabled, Langston and Bellows. Doesn't have a protector. Huh. Interesting. Knucklehead. All right. The Knight of the White Pants. All right. With, with Tom Wilkinson, Nick Stahl, and Selma Blair. Don't judge a man until you spend a night in his pants. <laughs> okay. This looks really bizarre, man. I've never heard of this one, one either. It's really weird, man. Come along for an unforgettable night of mischief music and mayhem with him. Looks like as messy guy down as luck business. I can... His daughter's punk rock musician boyfriend. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like an, an, an outrageous comedy and everything. Okay. That is interesting, man. It looks really wild and kind of bizarre, and I'm kind of interested. I'm not going to lie. Knight of White Pants. And speaking of, like, Selma Blair, man, I, I, I love Selma Blair. She's done a lot of really great work. Unfortunately, I think she's kind of sick right now, so she doesn't really do much, but I wish she'd do more. She's such a great, great actress, dude. Huh. Knight of White Pants. Weird. Then I'm seeing over here, guys, they have the DVD of Masterminds right here. God, I remember hearing about this movie, man. I mean, it's got a great cast. Zach, Zach Galifianakis, Owen Wilson, Kristen Wiig, Jason Sudeikis. A lot of really cool actors in here, but I heard the movie wasn't that good, is what I heard. I never saw it, actually, because I remember watching the trailer, and I didn't think I really liked the trailer, so I kind of stayed away from it. I mean, as much as I like Zach Galifianakis, there's certain times where maybe I don't like him in movies. He's maybe a little too over the top and ridiculous for his own good. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But, huh, I mean, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Kristen Wiig either. I guess it depends on the, on the movie, though, you know what I'm saying? But I heard this one wasn't great. Am I wrong? Definitely let me know about Masterminds, guys. Uh, they've got Digimon Volume 2, got Bearing the Axe, Hearth, The Ghost, let's see, World War II When Lions Roared with Michael Caine, Bob Hoskins, and John Lithgow. John Lithgow is Franklin Roosevelt, Bob Hoskins is Winston Churchill, Michael Caine is Joseph Stalin. Oh, that's really interesting. Wow. Oh, oh it's a miniseries. Boy, we've been seeing a lot of miniseries here at, like, the Dollar Tree, dude. Engrossing the casting room. Wow, look at that, dude. That's got to be a really good... Again, I'm not much into miniseries, but with these actors? Dude. Even Ed Backley Jr. is in here as well. I would, I would probably watch this, man. I'm not a complete history buff, but this time period really fascinates me. I would definitely watch this, man. Just for these actors alone. That's, that looks great. Wow, dude. Looks awesome. Um, her... They got The Family Hour. Tommy Davidson. Holy shit. Guys, I haven't seen Tommy Davidson... Oh, uh, God, in such a long time, man. I, I remember when he was this huge, like, uh, comic a actor, and he, he'd been doing a lot of really great stuff, and where did he go, dude? I don't even know where Tommy Davidson went, man. Wow. Yo, that's crazy. Man, blast from the past, that is. Holy crap. Yo, that's a really blast from the past. Uh, they got High Roller, Stu, Wet, Stu Unger story, which I believe we saw last time as well, High Roller, which I really, I, I do love a lot of these sort of gambling taking a risk type of movies again like like rounders is a favorite of mine i i love round, round, rounders man so anything like that i tend to 
at least try to give a chance to. And it's really cool with this movie with Michael Imperioli, which he doesn't do a lot of film work. It's a shame. Hmm. Uh, high roller. They got The Suspect with Mackay Pfeiffer and William Sadler. Nothing is black and white. Okay. The Suspect. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, the Wrong Man, The Perfect Crime, A Small Town Bank Robber Leads a Brute. Not far from the grounds, the police think the case is up, but they couldn't be more wrong. The real crime is not even. Oh, okay. They're, you know, money and, and, and sort of, you know, people's lives on the line and, and a robbery. Very interesting. I've seen movies like this before. I love Will, William Sadler, dude. William Sadler is awesome, dude. I think he's going to be in the new Bill and Ted movie, which I'm definitely looking forward to. I think that's going to be awesome. Mackay Pfeiffer, he's, he's done some good stuff. This could be like a small little sort of crime thriller type of movie. Nothing crazy. It looks interesting. Uh, let's see. The, the, uh, the wonderful parkour cover right there. <laughs> really interesting. Um, her. Ah, speed dating. God, God, I love that fucking cover. Um, American Wrestler. The Gulls. Uncanny. Pretty Shame. Uh, Dare. Trojan Strength stuff. Up the 10. Miracles of Jesus. All this stuff. Oh, the real Ghostbusters Volume 3, the animated series. Oh my god, dude. I haven't watched this in like... I don't know, God knows how long. Man, it's been so long since I've watched this. Man, what a blast from the past. Dude, that's awesome. Wow. Uh... Red vs. Blue, Front Runner, The Return of the King, the original animated classic. Oh, that's interesting. I did like the animated stuff for, like, The Hobbit. I thought that was really cool. Huh. Return of the King. No, I never saw the animated stuff before. I don't know if it's good or not. Definitely let me know, guys. Huh. Uh, I've got Justice League War. Another DC Universe original m movie. Honestly, honestly, again, man, as a lot of these DC Universe ones you guys tend to really enjoy. Again, I, I, I've only watched a couple, so i got to watch more, but it looks really cool, though. Justice League War. Um, Roxy Hunter and the Myth of the Mermaid movie. Oh, Nickelodeon. Okay. Interesting. Roxy Hunter. That is weird, dude. Um, filled with fun and mystery, Roxy is a delight. Super Sleuth Rox, Roxy Hunter is back on the case. When, oh, these sort of like kids detective m movies over at, at, at Nickelodeon. I don't really ever... I don't really ever watch this stuff, man. But the Nickelodeon stuff... I, I'm not a fan of Nickelodeon, but whatever. Uh, they got Curious George, uh, Cinderella Story, Once Upon a Song, Lucy Hale, uh, Can the Girl with a Dream Voice Sing Happily Ever After? Oh, that's interesting. Cinderella Story, Once Upon a Song. That's interesting. Hmm. Uh, Rain Drain. Ah, Batman, Return of the Cape Crusaders. I think we saw this one other time over at the, that, the Dollar Tree. I've heard mixed things about this. I heard people really liked it, and there's some people who didn't really like it all that much. I've heard mixed opinions on it. But I know my friend John picked it up, and he really actually enjoyed it. He thought it was a really fun sort of blast from the past. Huh. Return of the Cape Crusaders. God, it's been so long since I've seen sort of that old school Batman stuff. God, I miss that. That was really fun, dude. Adam West was a blast, man. God. Um... Mr. Troop, ma? I have seen on Nickelodeon with George Lopez. It takes a real man to be one of the girls. God, look at that beard. <laughs> oh, look at that. That was really interesting. Mr. Troop, ma, with George Lopez. Okay. Very interesting. Sort of like, 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 miss, like a mix of Mr. Mom and Troop Beverly Hills almost or something, right? No, weird, dude.
and it includes both the widescreen and the full screen formats on one disc. Ooh, lucky us. Wacky adventures with the kids in a troop. Okay, George Lopez. I've never always been a fan of George Lopez. I've never really liked what George Lopez, is, like his comedy. It's not that I don't hate his comedy, I just don't really love it. Not, not totally my thing. But um, this is quite the interesting movie. Just that bear alone, I kind of want to watch it. Interesting. Um, the hero of Color City there for kids. Very interesting. With voices from Christina Ricci, Craig Ferguson, Rosie Perez, Wayne Brady, Sean Astin. It's interesting. For the kids. Uh, they've got Madeline over here for that. They've got Life, Who We Are Now, Knucklehead. Ah, The Deadlands, which we actually saw the last time as well during the sale. And you want to know what, though? I did watch it, and it's a pretty good movie, dude. It's not bad. It is, it is really action-packed, really bru brutal. It's a pretty good movie. It's not terrible. I actually really enjoyed this one quite a bit, guys. I really did. It's not the best sort of action, sort of, you know, ancient type of movie you've ever seen, but I really enjoyed it, though. Hmm. I like that slipcover. Uh, okay. Uh, Genesis, Cinderella Story, Rose for Life. Parkour, baby. Open Windows with Elijah Wood and Sasha Gray. Wasn't Sasha Gray in, in a Steven Soderbergh movie? I don't think I ever saw that one. The celebrity stalking movie we deserve. Okay. Oh, look at that guy. That, that, that's creepy as fuck, man. Uh, Oscar nominated writer, director, Nacho. Oh he, oh, oh, he directed stuff for ABC's The Death, Extraterrestrial, and VHS Viral. Creates an action packed world of voyeurism. Oh, that's interesting. Stalking and, and trying to get out from under your stalker. Very interesting stuff, man. Huh, I really like Elijah Wood, man. He does, he's, ever since he's gotten older, he's, he's been doing a lot of really weird and bizarre sort of projects, dude. Like stuff that's outside side of the box. Like he did that Maniac remake that I really liked, man. Sasha Gray, I don't think I've ever seen really Sasha Gray in anything, but this looks really cool, dude. Hmm. Hey, Dungeons and Dragons. Oh my god. We were bound to see this sucker. Holy crap, man. Dungeons and Dragons. Whew. Yeah, dude. I don't know when they're going to remake this, but they really need to because this is really rough, dude. Huh. Dungeons and Dragons. Lou Ferrigno, baby. Uh, Lockout. The Monster Movie Mix. Four Closed with Jamie Kennedy and Paul Sorvino. They took his home, he's come for theirs. Don't foreclose on this motherfucker's house, man. He's gonna come after your ass. Whoa, baby. A spine-chilling thriller. In the tradition of what lies beneath and when a stranger calls, really. I love what lies beneath and all those sort of like stalking and sort of getting back his house type of movie. Jamie Kennedy is the bad guy. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. I'm not going to lie. I definitely would be into that. Jamie Kennedy is a bad guy. Don't think I've ever seen that before. Pretty, pretty, pretty positive. Hmm, interesting. Uh, that, that, that. Uh, high Roller. Kill it, bearing the axe. Mother May I Sleep With Danger? Double feature? The original true crime classic and the horror reimagining with James Franco. No, dude, I've never seen any of these. Nothing with Tori Spelling. The 1996 classic. Tori Spelling started in the edges of your seat thriller about a woman who falls in love with a charismatic college classmate only to discover he's a deadly psychopath. That, that, that happens in movies more than we realize. Uh, I'm going to break free from it. In the honor of the 20th anniversary of the, the remake of the classic TV movie stars James Franco. That's rich, dude. I'd never heard of any of these ones, dude. I've heard of none of them. 
God, I haven't seen a movie with Tori Spelling in God knows how long. I didn't even know this even existed, dude. Is this kind of like, almost like a like a horror version of like some of those those stuff from like the uh, like the '90s type of like thrillers of somebody stalking you? It probably is. And I didn't even know that uh, James Franco was even in a in a um, a remake of this. This is really fascinating to me, guys. Swear to God, I like the cover. I may have to pick this up, dude, because this is really odd and weird, dude. And something I've never, ever yeah, seen before. Wow, if you guys have, let me know. Tori Spelling. Wow. I haven't seen Tori Spelling in a long ass time. Wow. Uh, the Summit, which you saw before. The Virginian. Mid range. Gift horse. There. Dinotopia. And Journey to the Center of the Earth. Now, now this is the old school one with Treat Will Williams. Over seven hours of adventure. Look at this, dude. Wow, man. That is really cool. Two complete miniseries events. I haven't seen... I, I saw this miniseries event long as time back when it's been so long, man. Wow. Dude. Man, yeah, I love me a good dinosaur movie at times. This looks really cool, though. Wow, man, that's awesome. Journey to the center of the earth. Whew. Takes me back, dude. Uh, they got... Oh, season one of Married with Children. Oh, dude, I, I used to religiously love this show, dude. I used to watch it with, with my mother and father. Oh, my God, dude, this was a blast. This was an absolute blast to watch, man. It really was. Dude, Al Bundy was the man. He was awesome, dude. Al Bundy was fantastic. Oh, this is such a blast from the past, dude. It really is. See, season one. I watch some episodes occasionally when I, they're on air some, so somewhere if I'm at a friend's house. But, yeah, dude, it's been so long since I've watched this. Dude, that's a blast from the past, dude. Blast. Let's see what else they got here. They got strange ones. We saw the last place. Fade Away, Two Lovers, which, hmm. God, I remember watching this at some point, but it's been so long, man. Gwyneth Paltrow used to be a great act actress, dude, like back in the day, like Sliding Doors and this movie and um, Shakespeare in Love. Gosh, she was so, so, so good. Doesn't really do much stuff anymore, really, unfortunately, but gosh, she used to be great. Uh, they have Tiger House, which I think we might have seen in a previous Dollar Tree video, I believe. With Dugray Scott. 12 hours, four killers, one way out. I, hear, I, I remember this looking really interesting. Sort of this type of thriller. You've been seeing a lot of thrillers this time around. I like the, the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree definitely loves their thrillers, guys. Uh, the Odyssey. The Loaded. The Flock, Afternoon Delight, let's see here, you got Curious George, a bunch of Munch, hmm, that's interesting, I've heard of that, uh, Short Term 12, Innocence, which still looks really cool, uh, The Little Prince, Return of the King, the King, Curious George, Alvin and the Chipmunks scarific double feature. Alvin and Chipmunks meet Frankenstein and Alvin and the Chipmunks meet the Wolfman. That's really interesting. Kind of like an old school kind of like, you know how back in the day like Abbott and Costello used to do the whole like, you know, Abbott and Costello meet this person or that person. Like that's, that's really cool for, for like the kids. That's not bad, man. I mean, bad. back in the day I used to watch Alvin and the Chipmunks. Of course I don't watch it anymore, but it's kind of cool stuff for the kids. If, if you're a little kid and you want to get the little kids into horror, then it's kind of cool to do it through animation. Not bad, man. Yeah, definitely get this one a look. It looks pretty cool, honestly. It looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. They got Scooby-Doo one. Super Girls one. More Curious George. Uh, Queens of the Ring. Looney Tunes. Oh, God, it's been so long since I've seen Looney Tunes. Classic. Classic Looney Tunes. See here. 
Tom and Jerry. Jeez, it's been so long since Tom and Jerry, man. You know, I don't really get into this stuff anymore. It's more for the kids anyways. And, huh. Wow, man. Look at this selection, dude. There is so much stuff here this time around at this Dollar Tree. In fact, both Dollar Trees, there was so much stuff to check out, dude. Some really great selection this time, time around, guys. Honestly, some really, really honestly great deals. Not much really Blu-rays this time around, guys. We, we, we saw some here and there at both places, but really just a lot of DVDs, man. And, you know, there was some of the same stuff we saw over at the first place, but there was a lot of more newer variety that we didn't see over at the first place either. That's some really cool indie thrillers and action titles, a lot of, like, combo sets as well. Wow, man, uh, some TV stuff that I had never even heard of. Man, there's some really great stuff this time around at this sale, dude. I mean, there's pretty much something for everyone. Stuff for the kids, if you're a horror lover, if you're a fan of thrillers, action stuff, horror, you know, like some miniseries. Uh, yeah, man, this was a really great time going to the Dollar Tree this time around. Um, a lot more variety than last time and a lot of really cool and interesting titles, plus a lot of the mainstream movies as well that I hadn't seen in a long time, man. A blast from the past for sure. Yeah, this was a really cool time, man. All right, uh, let's head home and finish the video. Oh, all right, everybody. I am back from the movie hunting trip to the Dollar Tree locations for the Dollar Tree sale and wow, so soon after the last one, you know, I was talking to one of the employees over at the first Dollar Tree location I went to and I said to them, I was like, I remember when this sale would happen. And then three, four, five months would go by and you wouldn't really see it. And then suddenly the sale would pop up again. And then it would be so much time after that. And then finally would come around again. And now it's shrank down to, I don't know, like two months, maybe a month and a half since the last sale. And i think these people who run the dollar tree locations they know that this is hugely popular people have really caught on and the word has gotten out and now the time has just gotten so close to one another between one sale to the next and i don't think it's going to be stopping anytime soon i mean they see the value in it and as long as these movies and these physical media copies sell why not continue to, you know, put it out there for the people? Because if it sells, you're making money. Uh, if the train keeps on rolling, why not continue to roll with it? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's always interesting because even if you're curious about a title, I mean, if it was 10 or $15, maybe you wouldn't do it because you sort of look at the title and you're like, ah, do I want to really invest 10 or $15 in this title? But when you say, hey, it's only a dollar, I think then you're like, okay, I'm going to give these movies a chance. And I think that's what's really cool about this sale is you have these these sort of big name titles that you've seen before. But then you have these indie titles and these sort of obscure B movies. And you have things that it's a great mix and mashup of all these very interesting genres and everything that, that the Dollar Tree gets in for this dollar sale. And again, when you have titles that you only pay a dollar for, I think in a lot of ways you're able to take a gamble on things that you might not have uh, otherwise. And you give movies a chance that maybe before you were hesitant on, but again, a dollar, you can spend a little bit more money and get your money's worth, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, this sale keeps on getting really popular, man. And Dollar Tree knows it. They know it in a big bad way, trust me. So, uh, this is going to continue for quite a while, man. I don't know when we're going to see the next sale, but uh, expect it sooner than you might think. Trust me, guys. It's, uh, I, think, I think they want to keep this ball rolling just as much as you guys do, for sure. But, um, and also, really interesting variety this time around, too, because, you know, another employee from the second location was talking to me, and I said, hey you know the the selection here this time around is really great and they were like 
yeah, they thought the selection last time around wasn't so hot. And I was like, yeah, it wasn't really that good. This time around, they definitely brought out the big guns and brought out a lot of really cool variety this time around. And so definitely made up for a sort of a slight lack of it last time. But yeah, some really great titles and a lot of really unique stuff at each place. So yeah, I mean, and depending on where you live, there's always going to be different titles no matter where you go. Where I am, there might be slightly different stuff where you than where you guys are. So uh, give and take, not every place is going to have the exact same titles. But for the most part, some of the same variety is there. But quite the variety for sure, guys. And, um, well, I actually ended up getting stuff from the first location and the second location. So, uh... Let me show you guys what I picked up here. Uh, some really interesting stuff. Stuff I decided to give a little bit of a chance on. Uh, the first thing I got was... I got the... The, um... Buddy 2 movie combo of Loose Cannons and... Another U. I had to pick this up, guys. I really did. Because I love Loose Cannons. I was talking to my mother, you know, after going to these... Dollar Trees and I said do you remember loose loose cannons you had it on one of the VHS tapes and she's like Yeah, oh my god. I haven't seen that movie in forever and I'm like yeah, it's so good And I even was talking to one of the employees at one of the Dollar Tree and I said you got to watch this man This is so good. This is a great great sort of you know buddy cop comedy That is really underrated and they're like oh really and they they picked up a copy and I'm like this is so good, dude. This is honestly one of the best underrated Dan Aykroyd films that I can easily think of. It's it's kind of been forgotten over the years, but honestly, I love this movie so much and I'm so happy that it finally came out, man. I It's probably been out for a while, but I just didn't even know it. Uh, I hope down the line maybe this gets some sort of Blu-ray release. I kind of doubt it. It's pretty damn obscure, but... Um, Anything's possible. I, I certainly love, love to see it, but I'm definitely excited about that. And another you, I've never seen it, but I love Gene Wilder. I, I, I love Richard Pryor. I think both of them are geniuses, and I've seen other comedies with them, so I'm definitely willing to give this one a chance for sure. So, a great two combo set. Trust me, guys. Great one. I also picked up the DVD of Life. And I really wanted to pick this one up because I think it looks really fascinating. I'm interested in sort of the sort of inspired by true stories and the the actors in this thing. You know, from Joel Edgerton, Robert Pattinson, Dane DeHaan, Ben Kingsley. The, the, the fact that they're talking about, you know, um, just the, the whole thing of Rebel Without a Cause and... Just, uh, just really trying to recreate this this story and from that time period, and it just really looks really fascinating to me. And I like these type of tales, and I'm really interested in this one. This one looked really curious to me, so I definitely want to check this one out, guys. I got that. I also picked up Final Girl, and I wanted to pick up Final Girl because I thought it looked cool and. Abigail Breslin, man, for some reason, I think Abigail Breslin is is getting to a point in her career where she's not, you know, uh, Little Miss Sunshine anymore. She wants to do a little bit more edgier stuff. So this looked really interesting to, to me. It might not be great, but I kind of like her in this sort of um, bad girl taking down the guys type of role. It, it, looked, it looked really interesting, and uh, I definitely wanted to check it out, man. Huh, very interesting in, indeed, and not bad special fee, fee features either, so uh, final girl right there. I also got here uh, Con Man right here. Now, I kind of told you guys I would give this one a chance. Uh, you know, I, I definitely saw it on one of the Tuesday Out and About videos that I did, and at the time, it looked interesting, but I think it was like 10 or $15, and again, I didn't really want to pay that much to sort of get a chance to look at it. But now, the fact that it's only a dollar, I was like, you know, I want to give this thing a chance. I really do. Uh, you know, again, great, great cast here, man. Really awesome cast. And 
again, I'm kind of interested in Mark Hamill doing this role that's not really sci-fi-ish or fantasy. It's more sort of in reality type of role. I'm very curious about this one, guys. And again, for a dollar, can't really beat it. So I'm definitely interested in this title for sure. I also picked up uh, Punchline right here. I had to pick up Punchline. I didn't ever have it in the collection. And I really like this one a lot. This is, again, is a very underrated Tom Hanks uh, comedy. Nobody really ever talks about this one. In fact, I was talking to another uh, Dollar Tree employee who was like, never heard of this one. And I'm like, it's just one that, that just doesn't really get mentioned a lot of times. And it's it's really underrated, really great performances. Sally Field is awesome in here. Tom Hanks is really funny. It's It's got this great story about, you know, of course, you know, the friendship between these two and sort of the rivalry and, uh, you know, who's the funnier one between the two. It's, I really like this one, man. It's, it's definitely been very much under the radar, but it's one I think you guys should definitely invest your time into at least checking out. So, yeah, I got this one. Hopefully at some point maybe this comes on Blu-ray, but for the time being, uh, DVD right here, Punchline. And last but certainly not least for the first location, I got VHS. Yeah, I picked up VHS, man, and I don't even have this on Blu-ray. I'm sure it's probably cheap on Blu-ray to pick up, but I hadn't seen it in a long while. And I remember really liking it. I really liked, you know, the story. I liked, uh, I liked sort of the creepy aspects of the tales that they tell. I like how they're using the VHS tapes. I, I thought it was one of the better anthologies to come out in quite a while. But I haven't watched it in so long that I kind of need to revisit it. And for only a dollar, I figure, might as well invest time to revisit it this time around. So I'm curious if it still holds up. I, I, I haven't watched it for years, so I'm kind of hoping it does. But if I really like it, I may pick it up at some point on Blu-ray. But in the time being, I'll uh, recheck out VHS for only a dollar can't really beat it guys so I got all that at the first location and at the second location guys I picked up see here I picked up gardens of stone now the, the main reason I wanted to pick this up is because it's directed by Francis Coppola and again I I didn't know about this movie. I, I'm a big fan of Francis Ford Coppola. I like a lot of his work. And and I thought to myself, I'm like, this is really interesting. I'm like, okay, I, I've never heard of this, but I like a lot of this guy's work, and it's at least worth looking into, especially for a dollar. So I thought, wow, okay, this is a film of his I'd never even heard of or never even thought existed. So this is one I'm very interested in ch checking out for sure, guys. I, I think... The cast here looks really awesome, and, you know, I'll give anything with Francis Ford Coppola a chance, because, again, the guy who makes Godfather and Apocalypse, now you gotta respect the dude. So, I'm definitely interested in checking this bad boy out. Again, for only a dollar, can't really beat it, guys. Then, I picked up Burying the X. Now, I, I really wanted to, to buy this, because, again, I remember really liking it, but it's been a while since I've watched it, and I really love the cast here, and, and you know, just, again, Anton Yelchin, he was awesome, dude. He really was. He was great. He was great at comedy. He was great at drama. I, I really like this, this movie. It mixes sort of the comedy with the horror pretty darn well. Joe Dante's a great d d director. It's great to have more of his stuff in the collection. And, again, if I like it, again... I may at some point pick it up on Blu-ray, but again, for a dollar, it's worth revisiting it and seeing if I still like it. So, yeah, I gave this one a chance yet again, guys, burying the axe. And last but definitely least, ah, I said I wasn't going to do it, Yoga Hosers. Okay, so before you guys get on me, let me tell you. The reason why I bought this was a friend of mine messaged me and he asked me, oh, what do they have? And I named off a bunch of titles and, and he was like, Yoga Hosers, I, I, pick that up for me. And I'm like, you really want me to pick up Yoga Hosers? And he, he's, like, he's like, yeah, pick it up, please. 
And so I did, and, you know, I was out doing other stuff, and a few hours later, he, he messages me and said, I don't really need it. And, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I should have texted you sooner or anything and, you know, and I'll pass. And, and I was like, I, I just bought it. Are you kidding me? And, and, and he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I changed my mind. And I was like, I was like so now I'm stuck with a copy of Yoga Hosers on Blu-ray. Uh, should I keep it, guys? Should I keep it in the collection just for being a Kevin Smith fan? Should it be one of those red-headed stepchilds in the collection? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, oh, man. I, I'm now stuck with a copy of Yoga Holders. But maybe, again, it could be one of those red-headed stepchilds that you have in the collection where somebody looks at your collection like, Yoga Holders, really? Yeah, so... It was only a dollar, so you can't really follow me, guys, but yeah, so, yoga hosers. I said I wouldn't do it, but I did. God help me. Uh, everybody needs redheaded stepchilds in the collection. I guess yoga hosers will be one of them. Uh, but that is all of the movies that I got, guys, and I had quite the haul, man. Wow, dude, quite the haul this time around. More than I've usually picked up in the past. That's because they had a lot of great variety and a lot of great selection, guys. Well worth it, for sure. Uh, definitely let me know what you guys picked up this time around. There's a lot of great variety out there. Hopefully, you guys picked up something really good. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of the Dollar Tree sale, what you think of of the selection that you found at your stores, definitely let me know, guys. And, uh, uh, well, if you enjoy the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Check out the other Blu-ray and DVD Tuesday videos I do, the other movie hunting videos I do, uh, the movie reviews that I do with my friends, plus so much more content that's on the channel. If you love physical media and movies, hit subscribe and be a part of the Film Fan Nation. Thank you guys so much for watching the videos. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for taking the time to comment and watch the videos. I appreciate you guys so much. And check me out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Film Fan went away. Check out everything I do, plus special videos and pictures from time to time as well. All right, guys. I will see you back next time for a brand new movie hunting video at the Dollar Tree stores. See you later, guys. And uh, for a dollar, you can't beat it.